Hey everybody, welcome to Love Always Adventure Often. Today I'm talking about figuring out your floor plan for your schoolie. The cool thing is that when you, once you strip out your, your school bus, it is an empty slate. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's also daunting because you know whatever decisions you make at this point, you're going to have to live with for the rest of the time you own the bus. So we did some things that we're really happy with. We also did some things that we're not so happy with, and I'm gonna talk about all of those. Basically, I'm just gonna give you some tips in planning out your floor plan for your schoolie. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's do it. Hey friends, we're the Browns. Chad, Katie, Addison, and Kenya, Milo, and Charlie. We live to love an adventure. This is our story of leaving the norm behind to travel the United States full time spreading love and encouraging others to do the same. Our family motto is love always, adventure often. So hit subscribe and join us for this incredible journey. So my first pointer or my first step seems pretty obvious, but for us it was a huge eye opener and a really important first step. So that's making a list of everything that you want inside your school bus. And I mean everything, not only the things that you want, the things that you're going to need as far as amenities and you know running water and electrical and how many different types of system and if there's gonna be solar. I mean, just write down everything. Because for us, we did this. However, we got well into our build and discovered probably four, five, or six things that we completely forgot. So I've got our list that we put together and I'm actually going to link it in the description below so that you can take a look at our list of everything that we wanted in the bus, including the things that we forgot to put on the original list. So go ahead in the description, click on the link and grab that. So for us, come on a couple of the highlights. We knew we wanted three bunks. We got three kids. We wanted them to have their own bed, obviously. We wanted a convertible, good sized couch. Um, we wanted as much counter space as possible with oven and as large of a refrigerator as we can. We're planning on going off the grid for a week or so, um, and we wanna be able to carry as much food as possible. We knew we wanted a really robust solar system, which would require a really good battery bank, which takes a lot of room and weight. Um, we wanted enough fresh water, uh, we wanted to make sure we could maximize the size of mine and Katie's bed so that we can remain comfortable. We needed an office. I'm going to work while we're on the road and I need a closed off dedicated space to work. Also, storage. We're gonna have kayaks and paddle boards and all types of crazy, all you know, just a ton of equipment, plus our camping equipment, plus just stuff. <laughs> as, as little stuff as we can live with, but as much stuff as we can fit, right? And storage I'm gonna talk about is one of the things that we really overlooked. Um, so we ended up adding some a couple closets after we had most of our floor plan built and it ate up two feet on both sides of the bus. So don't discount storage. Make sure you have enough storage for everything that you're going to, to wanna take on the road with you. So remember, that's just our highlight list. I'm gonna include our entire list down below in a link. All right, my friends, next thing is get a really good idea of the amount of room, square footage, length, width, all of that kind of stuff that all of these things take up. Obviously, as you go on to the next step, which is drawing it out, drawing your floor plan out, getting some grid paper or whatever you wanna use. Some people use like AutoCAD programs, which is pretty crazy, incredible. Uh, we didn't do that. I just had some graph paper that we just kind of started drawing out, measuring things out. It's so surprising how much room things take and how quickly the room gets eaten up. So. Make sure you draw it out before you start committing to materials, before you start committing to or getting your mindset on having certain things. Uh, just really make sure that you draw this thing out so you can have a, a realistic idea. And don't forget, if you're framing with two by fours, this is one thing that I totally overlooked, is that obviously every two by four takes an additional three and a half inches. Imagine that. So if you have six walls going this way, I mean, I didn't do the math before I started recording, but that's actually quite a bit of, of space that adds up 
when you have the wall width. I know a lot of people don't frame with two by fours. I get that as well. I wanted to run electrical into those walls. Um, so I didn't do just the particle board partitions uh, that a lot of people do, but we really wanted to, to just frame it up and have the electrical running through the walls. So anyway, write it down on paper, map it out, start to get a really good idea of all of your measurements. Centralize your utilities. Here's what I mean. For us, it was really important and it became more important as we started our build out. We actually had to do some modifications with our water pump because we wanted to make sure that all of our utilities were centralized so that they're kind of in the middle-ish of the bus and they're going forward and backwards. We found that we actually could save a lot of material that way. And when you're running power lines, it preserves power. There's just a lot of benefits to having shorter runs, both in your water, in your power, um, in your solar, all of that kind of stuff. So we really focused on keeping all of our utilities pretty centralized right in the middle of the bus. And that includes our underbody utilities as well, our fresh water so that it can be right below the water pump. That's one thing I found out the hard way. I had a different plan for our water pump and I needed to change it because I had it too far away from our fresh water tanks. And a lot of people let me know that pumps aren't meant to pull, they're meant to push. So I was gonna overwork the water pump if I had it too far away from the tanks. Anyway, that's enough on that. Just centralize your utilities and then run them to the front and run them to the back. Okay, one thing that I did in some places, but I wish I would have done it in more places, is I wish I would have utilized the frame of the bus more for my walls, to mount my walls to. A lot of times I found myself putting false backing between the frame rungs that go, you know, width-wise across the bus. So every, you know, 33 inches or so, and they're different measurements. That's one thing to, to realize too, is that not all these windows are the same width or the same, uh, you know, not all the frame beams are the same width apart. So I wish that I would have built our walls. I wish I would have planned it more with these actual beams that go through the bus. Would have been much easier for backing, would have been a lot less work putting all that false backing in and bridging between those and then putting the walls in. So I really wish I would have known this as we were drawing it out and come in here and mapped out all of our cross members or all of our frame uh, joists and, uh, and really planning around that as well. I think it could have added a little more rigidity to our framework, our interior framework. Next step, which we had a ton of fun with, and you can actually check out the video when, when we did this, I'll link it below in the description, but tape it out on the floor. I know if you've done any schoolie research at all, you've seen people taping out their floor plans on their floors. We had a ton of fun with this. It kind of felt like that first step of building, really. Uh, we had the floor in, um, and then we started taping it out. We could really sit in places and fill it out and you know, you know, know, sit in like bathtub areas and see if that was really gonna feel like enough space. This was really cool, uh, and I just encourage you to have a lot of fun with this process. It also really gets you in the mind frame of how functional your bus can be or will not be if your floor plan does not work. So I strongly encourage you, once you have your floor in, come in and just tape the whole thing out. We took almost a full Sunday and just sat in it. We taped some things out, we sat with it, taped some more things out. We were really trying to be as mindful as possible with this process. And finally, be flexible. Don't be so rigid that you don't wanna make any changes once you get into the build. I can't tell you how many walls I moved. <laughs> I, I already told you that we added two storage closets because we got everything built and realized that we had no storage. And so I'm just saying, be flexible, have fun with it, and, and make sure that you're willing to adapt as you discover new things um, and go through different challenges or figure out different challenges that you're gonna have with the floor plan. I guarantee you that you're not going to get it right the very first time. So just be willing. It feels like it's you know five or four steps back, um, but really what it is is it's getting it right and it's getting it the way you're going to love your schoolie home. So thank you so much for watching. This has been awesome. Don't forget the links that I'm putting below. My list of things that we considered that as we were building our schoolie of what we wanted in it. And secondly, the video where we tape out our floor. And thank you so much for watching. Also, if there's something that's not on my list or something that you put in your schoolie that's like really unique and you are proud of it, 
or, or are planning to put in your schoolie, please put it in the comments below. It's so fun to look at people's creativity, different opinions, different needs, all of that kind of stuff. So please put it in the comment if I miss something, if something would be more helpful, or if you've just got like this cool creative idea that most people didn't think about. Anyway, we'll see you next time. Love always, adventure often. Wow, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoy seeing our videos as much as we love making them. Don't miss a single adventure or bus moment. Make sure you hit subscribe and share with everyone you know. We'll see you next week and remember to love always and adventure often.